ಭಯವತು ಅರ್ಹತು ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಭೂತ ನಮೋ ತಸ ಭಯವತು ಅರ್ಹತು ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಭೂತ ನಮೋ ತಸ ಭಯವತು ಅರ್ಹತು ಸಮ್ಮ ಸಂಭೂತ So, we have come to the day before we end, the day before the end of sitting in this building. And um, these people, all, all of you practicing very diligently, very, all very disciplined, and I can see, I think with your pra previous practice, you seem to have a lot of patience. quite still yeah this is quite impressive <clears throat> so often the day before we come out of retreat people ask you know what to do when I go back home when I go back to the real world after being in the heavenly realms of uh, <laughs> of a retreat center or the center of Dhamma, where you have, uh, you know, a, a lot of benevolent energy flying through the, through space, yeah, with people who have taken consciously uh, a, a vow of, um, as you found them in the precepts, you know, the vow to, you take a vow to refrain from harming any living creatures, to refrain from taking that, not stealing, not having, uh, you know, sexual misconduct, not um, lying, not taking drugs and intoxicants, not... Um, and then, of course, you have, after that, the, the, the other precept, which constitute the so more renunciate. So it's okay to eat in the evening, nothing unethical about it. It's more like renouncing one meal. <coughs> Same with, you know, you have dancing, singing, playing a musical instrument and beautifying myself with perfume and cosmetic, which in English has become to refrain from entertainment, beautification and adornment. <laughs> But the actual translation is a bit longer. And then the one on <clears throat> sleeping on high or luxurious sleeping place. I don't think we need to worry about that too much. Also, it's quite luxurious compared to the bed in the retreat center at Amarawati. They have decent bed, but no luxury around them. <laughs> so, all these precepts actually address um, area of our life which are quite tricky sometimes to really um, um, to deal with, such as speech, such as harmful behavior, violent behavior by body, speech and mind. And you have the, the, the kind of the temptation of stopping to drink or to take drugs and, you know, to this basically to um, distract the mind from itself and um, you know then sort of controlling your your food you can't really eat when you want anymore and you can't eat what you want mind you we did have a very very good food can't complain really been excellent And then things that we like to do, singing, dancing, playing musical instruments, adorning, you know, adorning ourselves with perfume, cosmetics, and so on, and uh, wearing garlands. In our precept, in the temples, I would say wearing garlands. It always made me think of India, all this big Baba and sadhus with lots of garlands. So 
you know, in terms of they say, no, we do, we can do without that. You know, it's like <laughs> how we think of India, we think of garlands, <laughs> and then <clears throat> yeah, so. Not indulging in sleep, it's really the last one. If you want to reflect on the last, the one on the, lying on the Hagia Lakshaya sleeping place, really, each of those precepts are, are there as a source of wisely reflecting, wise reflection. Yoni so manasikara in Pali. And this is what Achan Samadhu must have done to, when he explained to us how to use the precepts. You know, it was like, you know, nobody is a killer or, you know, a murderer or, you know, a violent person here. But what I discovered, as I said even before, that you, you do, with meditation, you discover your own inner violence, your own inner self-hatred, and we can violate ourselves very easily. You know, we can harm ourselves so easily by just being, uh, you know, uh, by in, uh, our inability to accept life as it comes through this mind and body, which is not just life, it's also the conditions around us, the situations around us, and so on. So it's quite hard. Life is not uh, so e you know, easy. People expect it to be easy sometimes. You know, to be basically, by easy it means Life to get give us what we want, or give us what we like. Then the stress is when we don't get it, or we don't get what we want, or we're not given what we wish. And so this first noble truth is always present in in our life. And remember, the first noble truth, as we that I'm talking about, is actually one of the first teaching of the Buddha after his enlightenment. The full truth, truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path leading to the end of suffering. So, out of compassion, the Buddha left us a path, which is amazing. He could have just abandoned us with just, there is suffering. What would he have done with that? <laughs> yes, and next... So he explained us the cause. Okay, well I may know the cause, but what do I do with the cause? Now I know the cause, I know there is suffering. And he said, suffering as an end. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> as news. If you see suffering on the kind of broader, you know, from a broader perspective, as a kind of existential state of affair, you know, that there is suffering in just being alive. Right? And if we don't pay attention to it, it keeps knowing at us. It keeps kind of, you know, it, it distracts us from just being fully alive and well. You know, we always have this funny feeling, this uneasiness, this unpeacefulness, this un kind of uh, calmness that comes from just not paying attention to the detail of our suffering. So, um, I haven't spoken much about the, the second noble truth, uh, the third noble truth, and the fourth one. So I mentioned, you know, it's like the mind that goes out, according to the definition of this famous teacher, Lumpo Dun, Lumpo Dun, right? The mind that goes out. Chit tipai ok in Thai. Chitta is the chitta. Ok, it's outside. Okay? Is the, the cause of suffering. All right? Suffering, you know, is um, the, the some the uh, sorry the uh, dukkha, you know, the fruits, the result, right? The result of suffering, of uh, the cause of suffering, is suffering. So he speaks in Thai. So chitipai or I mean, the mind that goes out is the cause of dukkha. The mind that um, you know, result from the, this cause of dukkha is dukkha, basically. If the mind goes out 
And mind goes out, maybe I will explain to you what that means, you know. So the result is dukkha. Normally you have dukkha, samudaya, aniroda, and maga. This one is start with samudaya, just to kind of wake us up, I guess. Samudaya, then dukkha, the result is dukkha. Chit, tihen, chit is um, the path. Normally the path is at the end, isn't it, for the Four Noble Truths. Yeah? So the mind that sees a mind is the path. You've been seeing your mind, haven't you? You have a mind that sees a mind, don't you? That's it, that's the path. That's why you need to go on the path, to be on the path. If you're off the path, you've lost the path. It's not so difficult to see when you are on the path and not on the path. When you are distracted, you're following down the sidewalk. And then the result of the chit, hence chit, the chitta that sees the chitta, is um, niroda. So simple, isn't it? In a way, it's very direct. It's the experience, the direct experience of the of the, the those truths. So the, the the mind that sees the mind is the past, and the result of seeing the the past, and you end suffering. You know, there is an end to it. Niroda, cessation, ending. Yeah. So these quite these are you know teachings which are not so easy to encounter in our daily life because they they require they require an attention which is particularly refined to be able to see it's not that it's so refined but we need to be acquainted of the appearance of these things you know how they manifest in us and how we're able to label them to name them if necessary to name, even if we can't get, uh, you know, if we if we can't get anything resolved, the fact that you can see something in the right from the point of your right view is helpful, isn't it? For example, you may be complaining <clears throat> for days, you know, about something that's not right in your life. And then at some point you wake up, and you're not going to solve the problem, but you see, ah, this is the first truth of dukkha. This is dukkha. Okay. At least you have you put it on the shelf on the path of awakening rather than kind of sitting in the garbage of your worry and anxiety and stress. I mean garbage. You know what I mean? Instead of being in the seeing with the light of mindfulness the fact that this is just dukkha. Not just, but you know what I mean. This is not an ordinary view of suffering. This view of suffering leads you to the end of suffering, Niroda. Yes? And so, in daily life, sometimes we get very lost because we are embroiled with so many kind of stories and feelings and people pushing you that way and this way and you feel at the mercy of all the winds, the whirly winds. Fearing to disappoint your mom and dad, you know, fearing to be unloved by your people living near you, feeling, uh, you know, the you might not be praised enough, you might feel unconfident because you don't receive any praise. This is really important in life, simple thing, like to be able to be encouraging towards people. You know, we say, what it is love? You know, how can I love this? Just be encouraging people in a good way, kindly, you know, rather than discouraging them so criticism and feeling that, making them feel hopeless, you know, because always, uh, always the, the, the cause of your suffering and your problems. So turning around the mind, we train it in a different way. We take... You know, the blame is not on anybody, but we don't blame anybody either. You know, we don't blame neither ourselves nor other people for not getting what we want. And that's not easy to see. Because most of the difficulties come from feelings, 
No wonder Koenkaji chose the feeling area because most of our difficulty, most of our what we call problem, come from an unacknowledged feeling. For example, you say something and somebody criticizes you. You haven't seen that when you said something, somebody criticizes you, you might not have seen the feeling straight away, hurt. You know, and then before you see the feeling, you're already lashing out at somebody else because of you. You know, it's like you want to hurt them back. You don't think you want to hurt them back, but that hurt is sent back to you. Do you understand? Blaming somebody is like trying to hurt somebody. Even though people will acknowledge that that's not what they wish to do. That's what we call anatta. Do you understand? It's happening without your permission. It's just, it's just respond without any kind of intention on your part particularly. It's just happening. Hurt, hurt. That's what we do. You know, the, these truths are not easy to see because there's so much underneath the level of the sea. <laughs> underneath the ne level of our mind. So, once you go into your daily life and you can actually begin to have a label for it which corresponds to the suffering that, that comes to an end, that might be helpful, won't it? It might liberate the mind from trying to work it out at a level where they just keep on proliferating endlessly and make you feel quite despair despairing because, you know, it's endless. Maybe you never solve it. Maybe you don't solve life, you don't solve your life, your situation, life situation, but you can begin to see that your mind can actually be liberated. You don't know what happened afterwards. Maybe everybody will be walking over you, you turn into a doormat, you don't know. You know, you don't know. But your mind will be with a Buddha mind, quote unquote. You know, you'll be hanging out with a Buddha in yourself. That's better than hanging out with people that hate you and keep on criticizing you. You know, you have this refuge of, of wakefulness, which we don't use the word Buddha mind in our tradition, you know, but it can be helpful just to, you know, play with this. And, and when you are aware, you are immediately, you know, with a mind that is awake. You know, Buddha means awake. It's not uh, Buddha means awake. So you are with the awakened mind. That's why I wrote the, the awakening to the past. You know, it's like you don't just carry the past with you on your shoulder, but you wake up. What does it mean? You know. So these these four truths are very much part of the past. Okay, right view is made up with the four truths. With the yeah, the four yeah ariyata ariyata satcha. Then you have also um, you know there are the material that found all along the path. So having a, 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 re, a reference point will help you not to think straight away. In a way, you have to learn how to speak to your mind so that it's supported in Dhamma. Right? Don't expect other people to do that for you. You know, it's, most people are not interested even for, in Dhamma. So you have to be brave because sometimes you feel very alone, you know, very lonely. Alone, misunderstood, <coughs> nobody knows what you're doing. They... And again, the Buddha does kind of fortunately, we have a teacher that can help us to recognize that in the world, there's not one person that hasn't been criticized. I find that really helpful. Because at least I get this universality, <laughs> a sense of view, universal quality. It's not no more me and mine. It just happened to everybody. Just like he says, whether you think you're superior, inferior, or equal, it's all conceit. Suddenly, my conceit becomes freed up. You know, it's freed up. The fear of being conceited. You know, it's like oh well. It was so freeing. I remember when I saw this. You know, because we're frightened to be conceited, especially on the spiritual path. Oh my God, you don't want to be seen as a conceited brat. <laughs> People have this idea that because you're on your spiritual path, you stop being human, you know. We have a lot of fear of appearing in the real light of our, 
<laughs> of, of ourselves. We want to look good. We want to look, you know, humble. <laughs> we want to look as if we know what we're doing. So many tricks that the mind creates, you know, to make us further sink into the delusion of, of our mind. You know, so we get, we pop ourselves up and then up and up and suddenly it collapses, you know, somebody, somebody says something and say, oh God, I've been seen, you know. So when you, <clears throat> when you go back to New Delhi over there, then you will find that, you will find this, how many people are seeing the Four Noble Truths and don't even notice? Just like me, for 32 years, I never saw the Four Noble Truths. I just had a malaise. I just felt this, it's just part of being human. I didn't think maybe I could ever, ever be different and different or transformed, ever. Can you imagine living without the Dharma for so long? And then suddenly you have a chance to wake up and to see that life is a great journey, your kind of path of transformation all the way to the last breath. That's different, isn't it, than me getting older and older and losing my job, losing my partner, losing my this, getting sick, getting old, dying. Even in the dying process, even in sick sickness process, <laughs> as a practitioner you can continue to transform your life. That's wonderful. So the aging process at some point is not such a big deal. Like you think, oh my God, when I was 32, 30, you know, I felt like 90 already. I said, I don't know what I'm saying, you know, I don't think there's anything to do, really. I'm bored, I'm bored to tears. There's nothing interesting to do anymore. What do I do? You can easily get depressed, you know, with that view. You know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> nothing to do, nothing to. But fortunately, I think all of us have a degree of kind of practicality. You need to eat still, you need to go to the loo, and you need to continue to wash yourself and continue to do all kinds of things, relate to people, and so on. And so um, we're fortunate when we really encounter this teaching because. Um, you're reminded that a every moment your life can be transformed. Not externally, people may not notice anything. And you know how human beings are much more interested in showing off that they are Buddhist, showing off that they are kind of more intelligent than others. It's so funny because I kind of you lose it. You know, I mean, I've shaven head with a robe, you know, cotton robe that you put the same every day, you know. It's a, it's difficult to keep up the external conceit, you know, because uh, also we have to be careful because as monks and nuns, we can still think maybe we're so important, you know. I always keep that in perspective myself because, um, you know, in a way, lay life is really tough. So you need to be very uh, strong to be able to manage this lay life that you have, you know. On our side, it's, it's, it's also difficult in a very different way, you know. It's like we have a lot of demand on ourselves. We make ourselves a lot of demand, wanting to be better known, wanting to be um, improve in our meditation, wanting to do this and that, you know, and then comparing ourselves with others and then spending years, you know, jhana or no jhana, you know, and then confused, you know, abandon it all, you know, kind of side for vipassana, hate the jhana type. You know, there's a whole range of dukkha that the monastic can, can concoct and produce in their life. You know. Is Zen better than Tibetan or better than Theravada? Is Theravada the city monks or the forest monk? You know, it's, it's endless, endless. You can create, you, you're very creative on the dukkha front, you know. <laughs> no, no, no drying up of that, you know, it's like... <laughs> It keeps going, you know. So, <coughs> like for example, the the cessation aspect of the of our mental objects, you know. 
Ajahn Sumedho is always to make us laugh by, by really saying the truth. It's like cessation, peace is an acquired taste. It's not something you jump onto it at all. No, nobody's interested in peace, really. They all want to do, you know, lots of meditation retreat to be peaceful and kind and quiet and calm and so on, you know. But really, if you listen to your need of your feeling, emotional world, you know, you want excitement, you want something really interesting, new, next, you know, what's next, what's next? You know, once you get the next one, what's next? So this is just the, the, the system, is is built up like this, you know, it's called rebirth. Kind of addiction to being reborn. We're still reborn anyway, but we want to control the rebirth big time, you know. How are we going to get what I want, you know? Or not get what? Be reborn into somebody who doesn't get what they don't want. Or get more and more and more what they love. Right? So, being noticing this addiction to rebirth, I, I, I see it all the time. It's a, what crosses through your mind is just a, something that has to hope to be reborn somewhere, you know, at some point. What crosses through your mind is like the next cup of tea, the next book, the next this, the next that. The mind is always creating a happy rebirth, trying to find a happy rebirth. You know, something we feel comfortable with. I notice that. I can see it, I can listen to it, I, I, no need to follow it. But it's interesting how so many times the mind is presenting a perception of the next, next moment as something you will like. Or, that's a, that's a rebirth in heaven, and then you can also, the rebirth in hell, you're kind of presenting the fear of getting reborn into something you don't want. They want heaven, get it, heaven, don't want hell. <laughs> so there's a lot of that in our daily life, isn't it? So it's not a matter of it's not a matter of kind of falling asleep and getting used to rebirth, you know, it's just being on top of it, <laughs> so, you know, to kind of use it for understanding the mind itself, how it how it gets into trouble and I get out of trouble. You know, and let's say that um, going back to calm and peace, you know, if you really spend a whole year just reflecting on what it means to be calm and peaceful, you might be really begin to set, to see clearly your addiction to excitement without judging. You don't need to judge, but you can see. So, you know, the amount of um, agenda that's there to keep the excitement going. It's just a matter of just learning, learning about oneself, learning with, about what we are working with. So people say, well, what happened when I, when, you know, what happened at the end of this pass? You know, if I'm into Niroda till the end, or do I die at the end, or what's happened? Am I going to turn into a vegetable? Will I be able to function with no desires? Not wanting and not not wanting. Will I turn into a, a veggie? Or just an empty vessel, just walking around like a ghost. <laughs> you can imagine anything, you know. So this is why we were, you know, encouraged with my the teaching of Ajahn Sumedho to notice the Niroda, to notice just even the gap between the end of a birth and the end and the next one. The mind that is not moving towards another rebirth, you can see it when it ends, we were immediately we were propelled into the next beginning. You can see, you can begin to be aware of the end of your thought, of the end of your feeling, of the end of a story, and pay attention, see how long the mind stays in that place where nothing happens. You know. Then you get a sense of what it means, what the calm means, you know. 
This calms, the calms doesn't mean you are comp you're not without any energy, you don't have any aliveness. On the contrary, the mind is very bright when you get into that state of calm. Because it's not a calm that, to me, that's it dependent on... It's a when you let go, when you really relax and let things go. The mind itself is pretty calm and bright, you know. And I have noticed my... When I don't think about anything, when I don't attach to anything, you know, I feel a brightness. You know, my mind is not here. It's just a brightness around, a sense of, you know, it's like, it's easy. It's not like a heavy wall, you know, that I knock my, my head against all the time. But to, for, you know, for that, you have maybe to see, you have to have to see your, a lot of fears. You know, we have so many fears that, prevent us to really appreciate what it is to move forward in life without fear, without... And to let go of... To be able to let go of fear, you have to stop letting go of the image, all the images we have in ourselves. We're terrified to lose our persona. Normal. I mean, that's all we have for a long, long time. You know? That's the first steps in the, on the spiritual path, is that you, you, you know, for many years just have a whole set of persona, one after the other, you know, the good guy, the, the good girl, the one who is angry and strong and going to tell the world, that don't step on my feet, I punch you, you know, that kind of, or you're going to, um, it's all right, You know, a lot, of, a lot of fixed view of oneself, rather than to see yourself as throwing water, you know? You know, it's kind of push and push and, you know, you stop having a fixed view and you become more human. You know, being human doesn't need a persona. You know, where a persona goes, you know, then you are with everybody. That's what I feel. Persona is, stops you from really connecting with people as they are, with their human side, with, their, with the, that which is behind all the persona. Persona is not a problem, you know, it's just uh, something that's created out of fear of, and out of, you know, out of fear of not being anything. Is you feel confident, you know. Maybe you are very confident too cultivated the person of being very confident, but then sometimes we scratch a little bit, you know, then it kind of, it shrinks like a little, like a balloon, you know. So, one of the things to do when you go back to the, um, to, to New Delhi or Jaipur or somewhere, to learn all these different cities, you, um, you know, the, the hardest part, I mean, I, you know, for me, I see the, the side of hu the human side, you know, and so we all want to have a strong discipline, but personally, I, I could not have one really good one until I came to the monastery, you know. And sometimes I see people complain about their ego, and I say, don't worry, don't, don't complain about their ego. It is your pride that made you kind of come every morning to the sitting for many years, you know. It is your pride in being seen a bad woman or bad man, man, you know, that makes you do certain things that you'll never do otherwise. So thank your ego for it, you know, <laughs> for the time being. You know, it does make you, of course, we, I, I can say that afterwards, you know, when I'm not so frightened of what I call myself, you know. You know, when we are uh, very much uh, and sort of entangled with that pride of the ego, you know, we that is not as funny. It's much more painful. Do you understand? <laughs> the fear of appearing some somebody or not, you know. And the monastic life is good, actually, to see how the. With intensity, all these things, you know. I've told you the story of the chocolate, bit of chocolate I took at Chetters, you know, when 
Yeah, I told you that. Well, we had a monk. I tell you another story because we had a monk, you know, who's not with us anymore. He's disrobed and so on. But it was also a very nice, you know, very serious looking monk. And he was not from our tradition, but he came to live with us for a few years. And uh, somebody told me a story not that long ago. Apparently, he came, he, he was well, late, he was late for the morning sitting. And then he came and he had to confess that he had seen a piece of chocolate somewhere and he taken it and eaten it. You know, it's like any lay person, you know, would say, so what, you know, did you give him a bit more? Like he would be really happy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was like, but for him, it was like a disaster. You know, it's like he's, he's bro he'd broken his vinaya in some way, to, in a mild, you know, mild way, but still, if you repeat it every day, that become a real problem. <laughs> if you keep forgetting. So we have this kind of means that help us to kind of stay beyond the straight and narrow, you know. So if you're a disciplined person, you know, it's not so difficult to have a good discipline in terms of doing your meditation maybe every day. I mean, going country really helped you to have to sit in the morning, sit in the evening. It's a very big thing, you know, to be able to do that with, you know, confidence. It's an incredible discipline. Not many people can do that in lay life. So you have already this foundation, which is great, you know. Now, you have to, you know, move on to sort of get, get that view that everything is okay. You know, as long as you get a precept, everything is okay. As long as you tie, you up, tie yourself up to the good, you know, the, the uh, intention to do good through the precept and not harming anybody. Or, you know, you have a good foundation that holds you here and then you can accept, accept the world. You know, that's, you're tied up on one level. Another level, you can, you can open your arms to the, the world without being terrified to break down you know, to do something really that you might regret later on. Yeah? So I think, you know, just like people go to Mass when they are Christians, you know, and have their little glass of wine, whatever, <laughs> you can take your precept instead. <laughs> right? Every week you can take your precept. Sometimes people want to take it every day. In Thailand, people are very serious. You know, it's interesting. They don't mind being at a monastery, and even at a the monastery, they will take it every day. And when they go out, you know, to their home, or and they have this, um, you know, desire to continue to follow the this commitment to the precept. And to be able to start again, you know, once you spend a week thinking, oh my God, how many precepts are broken, you know, you might not have noticed all the time. There's your, in, in the monastery, you're like under laser, you know, you look at every details. Even when you haven't broken the precept, I remember still thinking, I've, I'm sure I have, you know, it's like, let me sing again and then again and again and again, you know, your fear and your apprehension, you know, about breaking the precept sometimes can create a person that must have done something not quite right. So um, when you're in lay life, it's much harder to see the details of your conduct by body and speech, you know. But if you're really intent on leaving this path, you just have to start, really, to start looking like an idiot. Most people just plump, talk and shout and speak back and, you know, shout at each other, are rude to each other. So suddenly when you become somebody who is really careful with the speech, and Ashen Sumedho say you have to be prepared to be a real bore when you're mindful. You're not so exciting anymore, shouting, drama queens and all the rest of it, you know. I don't know about the men, but... The great warrior on the, his horses, you know, it's like, wow. Suddenly he's just walking mindfully, one step at a time. You can see he'll do a horse riding, but you might be more mindful and less kind of prone to kind of show off on your 
horses, you know. <laughs> you may be, might be more prone to just say, did I put my foot somewhere in the right place? Or did, am I holding the, the reins in the right way? Or, you know, sometimes the ego, the ego pride is so enormous, you know, you're busy holding your pride and doing everything that can show off. Instead of just being practical, you say, am I going to break my neck or not? <laughs> just down to earth, you know. I put the foot in the right place or not. Just as an example, that could be applied to any jobs or anything, you know. So I think the great change you have had from one tradition to another is this kind of opening of the mind and feeling that everything is okay, even the mistakes are okay, even the, you know, when you have this reminder of Lumpo Cha, we're often being used and we're not that to to give reason for making mistakes and being able to keep quoting Ajahn Chah in case you stop making these mistakes, you won't be able to use that anymore. But it's more to give a sense that we're not here to be successful in a worthy way, do you understand? In fact, in one of the little teaching book I have, you know, it's like I say, you know, the people who are really going through a hard time, I'm very much more interested in myself in people who can go through a hard time and come out of it, you know, in a good, transformed by that. You know, the good time here, you know, I'm so meta-like and so on, you know, it's so fine, this is great, you can celebrate the good moment. But people who can go through really the first noble truth without, you know, trying to distract themselves, and it can be anything, just being rejected for months, you have this feeling of being rejected. Nobody is rejecting you, but you, that feeling has come up, a reason in your, in your mind. Nobody might be rejecting you at all. But then you have to live with this feeling for a while until it disappears from your karmic, with, you know, from the force that keeps bringing it up. That could be anything, you know, that could be sometime you have a period where you feel, so just a short period when you feel everybody's criticizing you, or they stop appreciating who you are, they stop making you feel good about yourself, or you feel maybe you've hurt somebody, or you've done something wrong, you know, it's a big one, this one, guilt, you know, you've done something good, but it's not good enough, so you feel guilty. We, we are master at First Noble Truth. Even with PhDs and all that kind of thing, still you find your mind dissatisfied. Before you did it, it was a great thing. After you did it, it's kind of be different, isn't it? It's, a, it's the same pattern with everything, you know? Like being a nun, for example, you know, some you, you have high and lows. You practice, you see nothing changes, people still get on your nerve as much as they did before. You know, they can, sometimes it gets ex exaggerated, you know, it's sort of exasperated. You expect so much for your practice to lessen that you're never, never content enough and it always seems like you have too much, you know. You haven't seen the signs of improvement enough. You, you know, before you were really difficult with yourself, and then the next time you are less difficult. Eventually, everything is okay, but your mind will still create a sense that something is missing. You know, I haven't done it well. I'm just telling you the cheat. You know, the the cheating mind of keep creating dukkha sometimes. Huh? Not always, but so. When people talk to me in the last few days, you know, I say to you, it's very important to have time where really you let go of everything, not even meditate, but just go into nature safely, of course, you know, with all mad people around this world nowadays, the globe, prudently, but just hang out with nature, look at trees, you know, for a little while, look at nature, it's very peaceful, it's appeasing. I say, why is nature so appeasing? You know, appeasing because it follows its own nature. 
but it's not battling with everything. And not only that, somebody sent me this beautiful book about the books, about the, the, the trees having a whole world of compassionate kind of uh, holding with each other. Did you know that? Did you read this book? It's an amazing book. There's all uh, Rezo, what do you say, like a little, um, oh God. Eh? Yeah, the like a net, yeah, a whole net of, you read it, you've seen the, you know, yeah, it's quite amazing, isn't it? And then it doesn't complain, you know. Yeah? The name of the book? Sorry, I, I can't. I don't know, something about trees. The name, you don't know, anybody knows? This book, anyway. I can find it for you. I have it at uh, Marawati. Yeah, the life of the book or the underlying, underground life of books of uh, <laughs> trees. <laughs> books are made of trees as well, you know. <laughs> 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 it's the life of books. They are <laughs> they end up, yeah, it's, it's not such a far away, is it? <laughs> trees turn into books. Yeah. The secret lives of trees. That's right, secret life of trees. Thank you, Juan. So, I find that very, very good. You know, if you can't do your meditation, I find just like being uh, looking at the trees, looking at nature for a while, you can actually meditate looking at trees, you know. Just being looking at trees, and you can see, oh my, yeah, oh yeah, he did this, and uh, and after a while it runs out of steam and suddenly you're with a tree and you're really looking and if you you see the green the form you know and because tree is doing just what it's supposed to be doing it has a sense of peacefulness with it you know it's not complaining all the time about what it doesn't have I was actually, this is something I took from, I've got a, one of my best friends is a Christian nun, you know, in the, she was a Franciscan and she's now, for many years now, an Orthodox nun. And uh, she's also a teacher in her own uh, tradition. And uh, they use, they have a lot of wisdom teaching. And she just told me, you know, once it was, so how do you do when you are going through a lot of stress or something and you, you know, apart from praying and so on? She said, well, you know, uh, Saint, as one of the masters of um, wisdom in the, in the Christian tradition, say, well, we are, maybe you, you can go to, into nature, just what I've just said to you, and look at trees or look at something that brings peace to your heart, you know. It can be the Buddha, maybe for you, the Buddha pictures does that. Maybe for you, the... Um, you know, reading a, a passage of something brings peace to your... Some people have told me, they just read Ajahn Chah and they feel very good. Yeah? So we have many means to continue to our uh, meditation approach, to, you know, meditative mind to, the, to our daily life. Now, of course, the precepts are a bit difficult sometimes, you know. But hopefully you have a good friend you can talk to with if you have difficulties or if you have, you know, problems. It's good to have a good friend. Make sure you have good friends around who practice Dhamma. It's a great blessing. When the Buddha said that the Sangha is not just half of the holy life, as Ananda was asking him, him. it's a whole of our holy life, you know. Good friend doesn't mean the one who you get on all the, well all the time with, but it's they are maybe make sure the good friends that you want to talk to don't believe your mind because that is a disaster. If they believe your mind, they start creating more problems for you because if they believe your mind, it means that they have their speech is not quite great, you know, where they start talking to others about you and then by the time you finish your problem and everybody else has got yours, <laughs> you know. And they come to you and say, are you all right? I mean, it's already gone, finished, sorted. <laughs> so having a you know, friend from, of the Sangha is a very deep uh, support for the, for the life. We can understand you, speak to you frankly, and give you feedback, maybe even, yeah? It's quite important. A loving friends.
then there's several things that needs to be in place you know for you also it's always you fall 99 time you get up one time and you continue you don't get it right 99 time you keep going do you understand get up and go do you understand don't don't let life kind of make you sink back into oblivion you know keep going you don't get it right never mind next moment is fresh you know fill it, fill it with good with what you want to do yeah but what you want to do maybe is to get up in the morning at a certain time maybe you don't get it once twice three times you know but habits get really quickly settled you know it's amazing the mind is a great blocker, you know, it's like, oh my God, I won't be able to get up at that time. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not, you know, you can actually experiment and give yourself a week before you abandon the project, you know, whether it's sleep, whether it's speech, whether it's food, eat, what you eat, what, you know, give yourself the time to experiment and to and to reduce whatever you need to feel you need to reduce you know whether it's sleep whether it's speech or or eat or food you know amount of food you need when you overseat eat much too much and it's it's not the one who eat a lot who are fat by the way the one sometimes many nuns well not many some nuns you know are very very skinny and they eat like a, like an ogre you know <laughs> Not those now, so we have everybody is kind of very proper these days, you know. I don't know, I mean, I don't recognize the old days. You know, they eat well, they're really well trained, they have, they're quite delicate, but because the food, you see, the food at Amarawati is so good. In my days, you know, we didn't have such a good food, so when you had a little bit, you know, you really gobbled it down, mindfully, of course. <laughs> But you will be really, uh, you know, you will fear not having as, as the same next day or something, you know, as, as much. Or you didn't think you fear it, but the amount of eating you did was a, was a sign, wasn't it? That you obviously thought. And eventually, at some point, just give you the example that things move on, you know, the mind starts thinking, well, interesting, Sundara, you know. After three hours, you've still got an empty stomach. <laughs> so whether you eat like a pig, or you eat just a little bit, it's the same ex experience after three hours. So you start decreasing your, you know, your stomach. You, you talk to your stomach, and you have a wise discussion with it, you know. My dear stomach, you know, I'm so sorry about that. I just discovered that no matter how much I eat, Three hours later, I am in the same trouble with you. <laughs> Do you know? So that helped me to kind of not get so excited about eating because then, you know, that's a little thing you need to start noticing. Do you understand? To improve on your life without beating yourself up. It's the same with everything, you know. Until we, we did a lot of work in our monastery on, uh, for example, we... We use psychotherapeutic means, you know, as a group group therapy, and we had also nonviolent communication groups. If it was, it was optional, you know, people could do it or not, and that was very helpful because on the psychological level, you know, Westerners are pretty. I have to be careful the name, of the word I was going to say is that no, are pretty confused. <laughs> this is right now. I know no alpha, and you won't find it. <laughs> It's right. You probably know it. I'll tell you afterwards. Promise. Promise. <laughs> Start with an S. <laughs> and so, you know, um, you, we, 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 Buddhism didn't seem to be doing, you know, at first it's that Buddhism will sort everything out. You know, it's no problem. And then you realize the psychology of Westerners is so, com you know, complex and so kind of... Um, um, what do you say? Well, out of balance, you say. You know, that 
people can't cope. There's a lot of layers of psychological traumas and psychological, uh, yeah, traumas in general, you know, that people can't de deal on their own, you know, without spending time to opening it and to find out what's caused it and so on, you know, it's not easy. People have lots of, you know, a human life is full of traumatic history, isn't it? We've had it, I mean, in my life I have it relatively easy at that, at that level, even though I had a, my own problem as well. But, you know, some people have been raped. No, I'm not talking about the nuns particularly, but people have, you know, ab sexual abuse, rape, uh, you know, brutality of uh, some member of the community, of their family or something, or maybe having encountered, you know, very difficult people, situation where they were brutalized. There's a lot of that, especially for women, I think, you know. And we don't realize that the, you know, the, the, the women have a, a difficult time even acknowledging that because they're so frightened. If you acknowledge it, then you might, you might actually get into worse trouble. So this is why there's so much uproar about the women right now because there is a, a backlog of stuff, you know, that's never been talked about. That's never been really addressed properly, and people go. It goes unnoticed, you know. So, at some level, it's quite good to address all this. Except sometimes I think, my God, if I was a man, I wonder what I would feel with all this, you know, because you start walking on eggs and wondering what's the next one, next accusation coming out of nowhere. You know, it's like <laughs> you smile at me 25 years ago, and I knew. <laughs> You know, you don't know. It's like terrifying. It will be terrified for me. <laughs> I'm just joking, but it, you know, it's just to make it more benign. You know, but you could have, uh, you know, the situation is it's quite difficult to navigate through this kind of terrain of accusation and so on. Anyway, keep the precepts, most important things. You know, and then. Remember the five the 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 five gifts, the precepts, right? Freedom. In fact, I didn't quote it absolutely well last time. It's freedom from fear. Of those precepts offer to numberless being. I made a, I, I had a joke in myself. You know, I said, "Oh, I think I've fallen onto the most Mahayana sutta of the Theravada tradition." You know, numberless being. You know, when they say, "I will not." Anyway, you know the story. So numberless being, isn't it amazing that you offer freedom from fear, freedom from stress, and freedom from enmity and harm, you know. And then you yourself also partake of that freedom. That's where in the highest blessing they say, those who walk this path, you know, go wherever they go, they are safe. Now, it doesn't mean I affected a lot on that because you say, oh yes, I'm all right then, you know. It doesn't mean necessarily you're safe physically, but you're safe in your, in your heart. Do you understand? You have a refuge, a deep refuge that can help you even in very difficult situations because it's the refuge that's awake in you and is connected with wisdom, universal wisdom. Do you understand? And that which is clearly... So you may be able to, to do the right thing because you just have a, that place, the part of you that sees and knows what's going on in danger, in the situation of danger. And in a way, safely, it means also, like even if you died, you're, you will have this refuge with you at that moment. Do you understand? You'll be still safe with that knowing mind, you know, that is ever present. Well, I think I probably said enough. You know, remember? The, I think we went through everything using the material that well, that is left to us with the books we have, the reading the suttas, studying. You're very lucky with Mr. Da. You're, can have sutta classes, pali classes, it's, it's amazing, you know. And then meditation, don't you think meditation as well? Uh, we do have some workshops. Of course, yeah. So you can also do a retreat with them, don't you? 
Yeah, I do self-retreat, I did it, and they self-retreat so many people. That's right. So, you have a lot of support here in Delhi. And Mrs. Da is also a teacher. So, you have a lot of support in your practice, you know. He's just very modest at the back, never say much. <laughs> But I like to, you know, I like to name, you know, to, to make the woman visible, after all. Not to create problems, you know, but she's... <laughs> we have two, there are two teachers here who can, maybe more, I don't know, anybody else is a teacher of Goenka? No? So that's amazing, uh, you know, blessing to have that in, your, in the midst of you. And then good friends. I'll say more tomorrow probably just to kind of express my um, happiness of being here with you all. It's been really, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to repeat myself tomorrow. I have a hard time keeping it on. But <laughs> maybe I have to wait and to give you all the, <laughs> the, the full size of my appreciation. So we can end there. Oh, the Mr. Dart. <laughs> Mr. Dart is dry, writing, looking at me, smiling, partaking with everybody. I forget he's a, he's a translator. <laughs> रिट्रीट का पेनल्टी में डे है आखिरी दिन से पहले का दिन कल रिट्रीट समाप्त हो जाएंगे मैंने बताया कि आप लोगों की प्रीवियस प्रैक्टिस से आप लोगों ने बहुत सीखा है धैर्य है सीखा है वहां से लगा कि सामान्य था जब लोग इस स्थिति में आते हैं एक दिन रह जाता है तो ज्यादा चर्चा इसी बात की होती है कि वापस जाके क्या करना है तो मैंने याद दिलाया कि किस तरह से जो सो कॉल्ड बेनेवलेंट एनर्जी यहाँ फ्लो करती हैं उससे लाभ होता है और मुख्य दावनों याद दिलाया कि हम सब लोग शील पालन करने करते हैं पांच शील हम ग्रेस लो करते हैं और जो प्रवर्जित हैं वो तीन शील और करते हैं जो कि बेसिकली निष्क्रमण से रिलेटेड हैं जो हम शील लेते हैं वो हमको जो कठिन परिस्थितियां जीवन की उसमें बहुत सहायक करते हैं हमको प्रोटेक्ट करके रखते हैं जैसे वाणी की बात है बिहेवियर की बात है टेम्पटेशन से रोकने की बात है तो ये शील को हम उस तरह से देखेंगे कि हम हमारे को सामान्य जीवन में हमारी सुरक्षा देते हैं हमें आपने जो भाग ऊंचे शील है जो प्रवर्जित लेते हैं उसके बारे में चर्चा भी बताया कि हम भोजन का कंट्रोल रखना होता है कि दोपहर बाद भोजन नहीं करेंगे और जो चीजें हम सामान्य जीवन में पसंद करते हैं वो नहीं करेंगे जैसे ऊंचे आसन पर ऊंचे शयन पे सोना मालाएं गंध और अपने आप को स्वाभूषण से ढकना तो ये सब एक तरह का निष्क्रमण है जो सहायक होता है प्रवर्जक के लिए तो मैं बताया कि अजान सुबह तो हमको बताते थे कि किस तरह से हम शीलों का अपने जीवन में पालन कर सकते हैं क्योंकि वहां पे जब हम मोनेस्ट्री में रहते थे तो ये सब शील हमको आप एक दायरे में रहते थे और अपने ऊपर कोई बगैर वायलेंस की हम देखते थे कि जो यहाँ पे बताया करते थे अजान सुबह कि यहाँ पे जो आप रह रहे हैं तो कोई जेल नहीं है लेकिन आप अपने आप को संयमित करने का सीख रहे हैं और 
सामान्यतः हम जीवन में जो कुछ होता है उसको हैंडल नहीं कर पाते हैं क्योंकि जीवन जो है कठिनाइयों से भरा हुआ है और जो हम चाहते हैं वो नहीं मिलता तो फिर हम सामान्य जीवन में उसको ठीक से हैंडल नहीं कर पाते और प्रवर्जा के बाद या धर्म धर्म दे पढ़ने धर्म की शिक्षा लेने के बाद हम इसको प्रथम आर्य सत्य के रूप में देखते हैं तो आपने बताया कि प्रथम आर्य सत्य जो है हमने चर्चा की है चार आर्य सत्रों की और उनमें से दो की काफी चर्चा कर ली थी तो लुंग प्रदून का जो पैराडाइम है उन्होंने पहले भी बताया था तो आज फिर उसको रिपीट किया कि जो मन हमारा अगर बाहर चला जाता है बाह्य बाहर की तरफ आकर्षित होता है तो वो दुख का कारण है और जो बाहर जाने से जो एक्सपीरियंस होता है वो दुख है और इसी तरह से जब मन अपने में ही रहता है कॉन्शियसनेस सींग इट्स नोइंग इट सेल्फ या माइंड नोइंग इट सेल्फ वो हमारा दुख मुक्ति का मार्ग है और उस मार्ग को चलने का असर है कि निरोध का अनुभव होता है दुख निरोध का अनुभव होता है तो इस सबको ठीक से देखने के लिए आवश्यक है कि हमारी जो अटेंशन है मानसिकार है वो रिफाइंड हो क्योंकि जब तक वो नहीं होगा तो हम उसको ठीक से देख नहीं पाते हैं और ये जो दुख मुक्ति का मार्ग है वो स्पष्ट नहीं हो पाता है और अगर हम इस तरह से ठीक से देख पाते हैं मन जो है अपने आप को ठीक से देख पाता है जो सत्य की बात कही गई तो ये दुख निरोध का अनुभव स्वतः हो जाता है तो सामान्य जीवन की चर्चा करते हुए अजान ने कहा कि सामान्य जीवन में हम कई बार ऐसा महसूस करते हैं जैसे हम खोए हुए हैं संसार के मर्सी पे हैं कभी कोई प्रेज करता है कोई क्रिटिसाइज करता है कभी हमको दुत्कार देता है तो फिर उन सब से कॉन्फिडेंस अपना टूटने लगता है तो अगर हम इन सब परिस्थितियों को प्रथम आर्य सत्य की तरह देखेंगे तो ऐसा नहीं होगा तो ना हम उसमें प्रथम आर्य सत्य को भगवान कहते हैं कि समझना है तो इसमें हम उसको ना किसी दूसरे को ब्लेम करते हैं उसके लिए ना अपने को ब्लेम करते हैं हम उसको समझने का प्रयास करते हैं तो हमने बताया कि अधिकतर हमारे जो दुख होते हैं वो उन फीलिंग्स के कारण होते हैं जिनको कि हम इग्नोर करते हैं और फीलिंग्स जो है बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और उनको नहीं देख पाना दुख का काफी बड़ा कारण है क्योंकि हम उसको नहीं देखते तो उसके पहले प्रतिक्रिया करते हैं और जो एक अनुशय क्लेश रहते हैं जो छुपी हुई चीजें रहती हैं जिनको हम सामान्यतः नहीं देख पाते उनके कारण फिर प्रपंच बनता रहता है अगर हम उसको मन जैसे पाथ को फॉलो करते हैं तो दुख निरोध हो जाता है लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं सोचना चाहिए कि जो संसार की सिचुएशन है वो भी सॉल्व हो जाएगी लेकिन मन हमारा फ्री हो सकता है संसार की सिचुएशन सॉल्व हो या ना हो मन जरूर हमारा फ्री हो सकता है अगर हम उसको ठीक से देख लें और उन्होंने कहा कि इसी को फ्री माइंड को बुद्धा माइंड कहा जाता है किसी कई परंपराओं में क्योंकि जब हम कहते हैं वी आर अवेयर तो इसका तो हम अवेकन माइंड के साथ हैं जैसे जो कि बोधि चित्त है उसके साथ हैं और आपने याद दिलाया कि जो समाधि है राइट व्यू है वो बेसिकली इन चार अर्य सत्यों को ठीक से समझना है तो उन्होंने ये भी एक सूत्र याद दिलाया जिसमें भगवान कहते हैं कि संसार में कोई भी ऐसा व्यक्ति नहीं है जिसको कभी क्रिटिसिज्म ना हुआ हो तो इस बात को अगर हम ठीक से समझे तो जब हमें क्रिटिसिज्म होता है हमें परेशानी होती है तो उसमें धैर्य मिलता है कि हम अकेले ही नहीं है जिनको कि ऐसी परिस्थिति का सामना करना पड़ता है और अगर हम लोनली फील करते हैं फील मिसअंडरस्टूड लगता है लोग हमको ठीक से समझ नहीं रहे हैं तो हम समझ सकते हैं कि भगवान ने बताया कि यह स्थिति यह हर प्राणी की संसार में है इसी तरह उन्होंने एक कंसीट का उदाहरण देते हुए बताया कि एक सूत्र जैसे भगवान कहते हैं कि ना हम अगर हम ये समझते हैं कि हम किसी से सुपीरियर हैं या हम किसी से अच्छे हैं या हम किसी से बहुत बुरे हैं या हम किसी के बराबर हैं ये तीनों स्थिति 
असमीमान की बात है कंसीट है तो ये बात अगर हम ठीक से समझ जाए तो बहुत फ्री फ्रीडम का एक अनुभव हुआ अजान ने बताया अपने अनुभव से क्योंकि फिर अपने आप को ना सुपीरियर बनाने की कोशिश है ना इंफीरियरिटी को देखने की कोशिश है कई बार आपने कहा कि जो स्पिरिचुअल पाथ है जो धर्म का पाथ है उसको देखते हैं कि इसमें हम कुछ सुपीरियर आदमी बन रहे हैं ह्यूमन नहीं रह पाते और हम अननेसरली कुछ वो स्पिरिचुअल ट्रेड्स अक्वायर करने की कोशिश करते हैं कि हम हम्बल लग रहे हैं हम स्पष्ट शांत दिखे हैं तो वो भी एक तरह का डिलूजन ही है कि हम अपने एक अपेयरेंसेस को बना रहे हैं कुछ कुछ दिखना चाहते हैं अपनी इमेज बना के रखना चाहते हैं हमको इस बात का भी आ, हमको एनकरेज करने के लिए अजान ने कहा कि संसार में कितने लोग हैं जो चार आर्य सत्यों को देख पाते हैं तो अगर आप देख पाते हैं तो हम उसमें संतोष कर सकते हैं हम लोगों ने इस उन्होंने कहा कि आप लोगों समय से का पालन कर रहे हैं तो जो हमारा जीवन है वो बाहर भी एक जर्नी है वो कोई एक एंड नहीं है डेस्टिनेशन नहीं है और हम इस मार्ग पर चलते हुए हम अपने आप को अंत तक ट्रांसफॉर्म कर सकते हैं चाहे फेलियर हो चाहे बीमारी हो चाहे बुढ़ापा हो चाहे मृत्यु हो मृत्यु का समय आ जाए तब तक हम अपने को ट्रांसफॉर्म कर सकते हैं और ये कोई छोटी बात नहीं है सामान्यतः तो नॉर्मल व्यू तो ये है कि अब बुढ़ापा आ रहा है बीमारी आ रही है तो बहुत डिप्रेसिंग है लेकिन एक धार्मिक व्यू है कि यही हमारे जो है ये जो धर्म उपस्थित हुए हैं बुढ़ापा बीमारी मरणासन होना यही सब हमारे धर्म के शिक्षा के आलंबन बन जाते हैं और जब इस तरह से हम जीवन जीते हैं तो सामान्य एक्टिविटी जो दिन भर भी हम करते हैं वो भी हमारे लिए एक धर्म का संदेश देती है तो जब हम धर्म को इस तरह से देखते हैं तो हमको अपने आप को बड़ा फॉर्चुनेट समझना चाहिए बहुत किस्मत वाला समझना चाहिए अब बार फिर बार बार उन्होंने कहा कि इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि एक्सटर्नल सिचुएशन बदल जाएगी क्योंकि कई बार हम ये एक्सपेक्ट करने लगते हैं कि एक्सटर्नल बदले चाहे ना बदले लेकिन इंटरनल सिचुएशन हमारी जरूर बदल जाएगी हम अंदर से जरूर बदल जाएंगे चाहे बाहर वैसा ही बना रहे परेशानी बनी रहे लेकिन वो हमको अंदर से बेचैन नहीं कर पाएगी तो उन्होंने अपने उदाहरण देते हुए कहा कई बार लोग समझते हैं कि जो भिक्षु अब भिक्षुणी बन जाते हैं या शील लगारा बन जाते हैं तो चीवर पहनने से ही कुछ फर्क पड़ जाएगा उन्होंने कहा वो वो सब परिस्थितियां जो ले लाइफ में है वो वहां पे भी रहती हैं वहां पे भी कोशिश रहती है अपने, अपने को कंपेयर करने की कि मेरे को कौन सा ध्यान मिला मेरे पहला ध्यान है कि दूसरा ध्यान है कि वर्षना वही ठीक हो रही है फिर भी कंफ्यूजन रहता है कि जैन ट्रेडिशन अच्छा है कि तेबुतन अच्छा है कि थेरा वाला अच्छा तो जो उन वहां को सामान्य गृह जीवन में होती है वो वहां पर भी रहती है वही उसी तरह से प्रपंच भी बनते हैं उसी तरह से दुख भी क्रिएट होता है तो इन बातों का दोनों सिचुएशन में जो हमारा सहायक होता है वो हमारे धर्म कितने समझ में आया है और जब हमारे को धर्म सचमुच में समझ में आता है तो हम सेशन जो निरोध है उसका भी अनुभव करते हैं और किस तरह का होता है उसका अनुभव होने लगता है उन्होंने फिर हमारा ध्यान आकर्षित किया कि हमको लगता है कि हम वी वॉन्ट पीस और हमको काम रहना है लेकिन अगर सामान्य जीवन देखें तो हमेशा हम कुछ ना कुछ करते रहना चाहते हैं कुछ ना कुछ आगे बढ़ना चाहते हैं कुछ ना कुछ अब ये समाप्त हुआ तो अब और कुछ करेंगे ये समाप्त हुआ तो कुछ और करेंगे उसको उन्होंने बताया कि वो एक तरह से रिबर्थ ही है एक सम, काम समाप्त हुआ दूसरा शुरू हुआ तो एक दूसरा रिबर्थ हो जाता है तो हम वी आर गेटिंग री बॉर्न इन ए वेराइटी ऑफ वेज जीवन जीते हुए भी कभी कुछ कभी कुछ कभी कुछ चलता रहता है तो हम सचमुच में शांत से बैठना चाहते हैं या नहीं इस पर भी विचार करने की जरूरत है एक शिविर समाप्त हुआ दूसरे की तैयारी है एक किताब पढ़ी फिर दूसरी पढ़नी है एक ध्यान हुआ फिर दूसरा करना है तो इस तरह से हम निरंतरता से कुछ और कुछ और एक सेंस ऑफ कमी बनी रहती है तो वो सेंस ऑफ लैक जो दो तरह से हो सकता है कि हाँ जो हम चाहते हैं वो मिल जाएगा तो एक हेवनली अनुभव होगा 
और जो हम कई बार हमको नहीं मिलता जो हम चाहते हैं तो वो हेल का अनुभव हो गया सो वी आर बार बार हमको जीवन में भी रहते हुए जीवन में रहते हुए भी कभी स्वर्ग में जीवन रिबर्थ होता है कभी नरक में रिबर्थ होता है वो भी चलता ही रहता है तो इस सब अनुभवों को हम सम, अगर ठीक से देखें समझे तो इससे हम मन को समझ सकते हैं कि मन कैसे काम करता है और सचमुच में समझ सकते हैं किस तरह से मन को शांत किया जा सकता है जब एक एजेंडा खत्म हो और इससे पहले कि दूसरा आए उसके बीच में जो गैप है अगर उस गैप के ऊपर हम ध्यान दें तो इस तरह से हमको सचमुच में जो शांत चित्त है उसके बारे में मालूम पड़ता है और वही निरोध का अनुभव जो है जब निरोध का अनुभव हो इससे पहले कि अगला एजेंडा चले तो हम उसको उसके ऊपर ध्यान दें जैसे अजान समय को बताते हैं आपने कहा तो दुख निरोध का सचमुच में एक अनुभव महसूस होता है कई बार लोगों को ये गलत फहमी हो जाती है कि अगर हम दुख निरोध अनुभव होगा फिर हमारी सारी तृष्णाएं समाप्त हो गई सारी इच्छाएं समाप्त हो गई तो शायद क्या हम एक वेजिटेबल की तरह बन जाएंगे एक एक जॉम्बी बन जाएंगे तो कहते हैं ऐसा नहीं है अगर हमको सचमुच में नोटिस करना चाहिए निरोध और फिर देखना चाहिए कि ऐसा होता है क्योंकि जब हम एक माइंड स्टेट के समाप्त होने से और दूसरे माइंड स्टेट के पैदा होने के बीच के इंटरवल को देखते हैं तो उस इंटरवल में सचमुच में हमको जब कुछ नहीं हो रहा है तो वो दुख निरोध का अनुभव होता है और तब तो हम ऐसा शांति अनुभव करते हैं जो किसी पे डिपेंडेंट नहीं है किसी वाही आलम मन पे डिपेंडेंट नहीं है क्योंकि मैं किसी चीज से अटैच नहीं हो रहा हूं उस समय और वो एक रेडियंट माइंड का अनुभव है काम माइंड का अनुभव होता है और एक और बात उन्होंने ध्यान दे रहा है कि अधिकतर जो हमारे मन की बेचैनी होती है वो कहीं ना कहीं किसी ना किसी तरह के भय के कारण होती है और वो भय के जो जुड़ा होता है हमारी अपनी सेल्फ इमेज के कारण हमारी एक इमेज बनी हुई है एक परसोना बना हुआ है कि मैं बहुत अच्छा आदमी हूँ मैं बहुत अच्छी लड़की हूँ बहुत अच्छी औरत हूँ मैं बहुत अच्छा साधक हूँ मैं बहुत अच्छा टीचर हूँ जो भी है तो उस कारण से हम अपने को एक बहता पानी की तरह जैसे नकारा देन सींग वन सेल्फ एस फ्लोइंग वाटर कि वो प्रतिक्षण बदल रहा है वो सम देखने की जगह हम अपने को एक फिक्स परसोना बना देते हैं और फिर उसके उस अपने बनाए हुए जेल में हमेशा पड़े रहते हैं और फिर परेशान होते रहते हैं कि कहीं हमारी वो इमेज ना खराब हो जाए उस भय के कारण फिर दुख पैदा होते हैं नाना प्रकार के दुख उस भय के कारण पैदा होते हैं फिर आपने याद दिलाया कि अब हम वापस जब जाएंगे शिविर समाप्त होगा कल तो यू टू हैंडल द्यूमन साइड ऑफ दी कई बार हमको ऐसा लगता है कि जो ईगो है वो हमको बहुत परेशान करती है लेकिन उन्होंने याद दिलाया कि उसके इतने एक पॉजिटिव एस्पेक्ट भी हैं कि ईगो के कारण ही हम इतना कष्ट सहन करते हैं रेट्रीट में जाते हैं स्टील का गंभीरता से पालन करते हैं डिसिप्लिन पालन करते हैं तो उसको हमेशा नेगेटिव सेंस में ना देखें हाँ अगर उस ईगो के साथ हम अपनी इमेज जोड़ के उसको रोके रखने की कोशिश करेंगे जो बदलती चीज है उसको रोकेंगे तो सचमुच में दुख होगा तो इसको दोनों रूप से देखने से लाभ होता है तो मैं फिर उदाहरण के तौर पर बताया कि एक भिक्षु जो थे वहां एक बार रात शाम की सिटिंग में देर से आए तो उनको फिर कन्फेस करना पड़ा कि मैं कहीं पे रास्ते में मैंने चॉकलेट देखी फिर मैंने वो खा ली बड़ी छोटी सी बात थी लेकिन वो वहां पे बताते हैं कि जब इतना डिसिप्लिन रहता है तो काफी हमारा संयम बना रहता है और उन्होंने हमारे को याद दिलाया कि गोयंका जी के रिट्रीट्स के कारण ही हमें काफी डिसिप्लिन आया है कि हम सुबह शाम बैठे और हमें इस बात के प्रति कृतज्ञ होना चाहिए फिर तो प्रीसेप्ट की शील की बात करते हुए उन्होंने काफी जोर दिया शील पे कि किस तरह से शील हमारे सहायक होते हैं कि जब तक हम शील का पालन कर रहे हैं उसके बाद वी कैन साधना में कैसी हो रही है ये हो रहा है कि वो हो रहा है ये अनुभव है कि नहीं है उसका कोई महत्व तो नहीं है जब तक हमारा व्यू ठीक हो जब तक हम चार आर सत्यों का दर्शन ठीक से कर रहे हैं तो एक उस, उसके उदाहरण के रूप में बताया कि हम ये टाइड अप एट वन लेवल एक हमारा एंकर बना हुआ है और एक सहारा बना हुआ है एंड और उस सहारे के आधार पे फिर हम संसार को हैंडल कर सकते हैं वी कैन ओपन टू द वर्ल्ड और उन्होंने बताया कि कई थाईलैंड में जैसे लोग जो मनस्ट्री जाते हैं तो जब भी जाते हैं वो फिर से हर बार शील लेते हैं घर कई बार घर पे भी हर लोग शील लेते हैं उसका उद्द, उसका बेशक उद्देश्य यही है कि हम अपनी कमिटमेंट को बनाए रखें और क्योंकि गृहस्थ जीवन में शील बार बार टूटते रहते हैं तो फिर बार बार लेंगे तो उस तरह से हमारा जो शील के प्रति 
झुकाव है उसको बनाए रखने की जो इच्छा है वो प्रबल हो जाती है हाँ उन्होंने बताया कि मनस्ट्री में जो रहते हैं उनके लिए तो ये काफी चार फोकस में बनाया रहता है क्योंकि चित्त उनका ऐसा रहता है कि उनको बहुत गहराई से देखना पड़ता है कि कोई जरा सा भी शील ना छोड़ दिया जब इतने सारे शील हैं सामान्य ले लाइफ में काफी मुश्किल हो जाता है देखना लेकिन फिर भी जब हम जैसे ही महसूस हो कि शील टूट गया तो हम फिर दोबारा उसको शील को ले सकते हैं तो जैसे उन्होंने बताया कि जो शीलवान नहीं होते उनको बड़ा आराम से लगता है कि किसी पे चीख दो चिल्ला दो और कुछ भी किसी का तरह भी वायलेंट बिहेवियर कर दो लेकिन जब हम माइंडफुलनेस की प्रैक्टिस करते हैं तो ये हमारे लिए संभव नहीं हो पाता इतना आसान नहीं होता कि हम जब चाहें किसी के किसी के ऊपर चीखे चिल्लाएं या उसके साथ वायलेंट बिहेवियर करें उसका उदाहरण उन्होंने दिया जैसे कोई हम लोग वॉकिंग मेडिटेशन करते हैं धीरे धीरे चल रहे हैं और दूसरा आदमी है घोड़े पे चल रहा है वो उसको दौड़ा रहा है तो वो उस उदाहरण से उन्होंने समझाया हमें कि क्या फर्क पड़ता है जब हम ध्यान करते हैं और हम सजग होकर रहते हैं एक और महत्वपूर्ण बात जो जो जानने में बताई कि एक महत्वपूर्ण चेंज जो आता है हमको जब हम साधना की दूसरी तरह की साधना जैसे कहते हैं कर रहे हैं उसका मुख्य चेंज ये है कि वी ओपन टू द माइंड और अगर हमसे गलतियां भी हो जाती हैं तो वो भी ठीक है क्योंकि गलतियों से भी हम सीख सकते हैं और ये एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बात है कि हम अपनी गलतियों को साधना में ये गलती हो गई ऐसा हो गया उनको महत्व न दें क्योंकि उनसे भी जैसे जान चाह बताते हैं उनसे भी हम सीख सकते हैं और उन्होंने बताया कि जो लोग साधना में और जीवन में कठिनाई मह, बहुत महसूस करते हैं और उससे निकल के आते हैं तो उनकी सचमुच में साधना पुष्ट होती है क्योंकि उन्होंने प्रथम आर्य सत्य का खूब गहराई से और नाना प्रकार से दर्शन किया है और अपना चित्त को संभाले रखा है यानी कि दुख आया और वो टूट गए तो अगर इतना हम कर लें तो सचमुच में धर्म के प्रति श्रद्धा काफी बढ़ जाती है और वो जो प्रथम आर्य सत्य है वो कुछ भी हो सकता है कि यू फीलिंग रिजेक्टेड कोई कोई ब्रीवमेंट हो गई कोई लोगों से तिरस्कार मिल रहा है अनफेयर क्रिटिसिज्म हो रहा है कोई हमको अप्रिशिएट नहीं कर रहा है कुछ भी बात हो सकती है जो न, जो दुख का अनुभव जो है वो किसी भी तरह का भी हो सकता है लेकिन अगर हम प्रथम आर्य सत्य की तरह उसको देखेंगे तो उससे निजात पाते हैं और अपना कॉन्फिडेंस भी बढ़ता है कई बार उन्होंने बताया कि नन बन के भी ऐसा मन की स्थिति बनी रहती है कि मैं सीनियर हूं कि नहीं हूं किस मेरी साधना कर रही हूं कुछ फायदा हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है और कई बार इंप्रूवमेंट मालूम नहीं पड़ती है क्योंकि और एक्सपेक्टेशन बहुत करते हैं तो मन जो है कुछ ना कुछ तैयार बनाता रहता है कि मतलब प्रवर्जित के लिए भी और जो गृहस्थ है उनके लिए भी तो उन्होंने बताया कि यहाँ पे जैसे उन्होंने हम सब सबसे बात की और उनसे देखा कि उनसे समझा कि ये बात सबको समझना ही चाहिए कि जो भी परेशानी आती हैं वो हमारे साधना का पार्ट है वो साधना में अवरोध नहीं है और अगर ज्यादा दिक्कत हो जब कभी संभालने में मुश्किल हो रही हो तो उन्होंने कहा कि हमको थोड़ा ब्रेक भी लेके वी कैन जस्ट है आउट विद नेचर बाहर जाएं प्रकृति में जाएं उनको सीखें प्रकृति से सीखें प्रकृति को देखें क्योंकि प्रकृति के प्रति सामान्यता राग देश नहीं जागता क्योंकि वो एक नेचुरल स्टेट में रहते हैं तो उन्होंने एक पुस्तक की बात की जो सीक्रेट लाइफ ऑफ ट्री जिसमें बताया गया कि पेड़ कैसे आपस में इंटरकनेक्टेड रहते हैं एक नेट की तरह बने रहते हैं एक वेब की तरह बने रहते हैं तो पेड़ों को देख के भी हम ध्यान कर सकते हैं उन्होंने अपने एक मित्र की बात कही जो क्रिश्चियन नन है और विजडम टीचिंग भी फॉलो करती हैं तो उन्होंने बताया कि जो प्रेयर वगैरह तो उनका पाठ ही है उसके बाद उसके सिवा वो क्या करते हैं अगर जब बहुत परेशानी हो दुख बहुत महसूस हो रहा तो उनको भी उन्होंने ये कहा कि हम जंगल में जाके किसी को कहते हैं विदेश चले जाओ जहाँ जंगल हो पेड़ हो तो उनको देखो या उन्होंने दूसरे भी सुझाव दिए कि कोई परिहत्ती का लाभ लें कुछ 
ऐसा पैसेज जो है जान चाके या सुत पढ़े जिससे कि शांति मिले जिससे कि मन हमारा प्रसन्नचित हो इंस्पिरेशन बढ़े तो हमारी मेडिटेशन लाइफ में भी जो दिक्कतें आती हैं उनको हैंडल करने के लिए कई तरह के हम स्ट्रेटजीज नॉवल स्ट्रेटजी क्रिएटिव स्ट्रेटजीज अडॉप्ट कर सकते हैं और अगर आपके अच्छे मित्र हों जो धर्म में पृष्ठ हों तो उनको भी उनकी मदद भी ले सकते हैं जो हाँ ये जरूर देख लेना चाहिए कि वो ट्रस्ट वर्दी है कि नहीं और उन्होंने याद दिलाया भगवान बुद्ध की बात जो उन्होंने आनंद से कही थी कि जो स्पिरिचुअल फ्रेंडशिप है वो आधा नहीं पूरा ही स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ है कि अगर अच्छे आपके स्पिरिचुअल फ्रेंड हो तो आपको सारा साधना के अंत तक मदद कर सकते हैं तो ऐसे मित्र को साथ रखना भी काफी सहायक रहता है साधना के मार्ग में फिर उन्होंने बताया कि एक बात जरूर हम सबको याद रखनी चाहिए कि साधना करते हुए अगर हमारे से निन्यानवे बार गलती हो जाए तो एक बार भी उठ जाए उठ जाए एक बार तो उठते रहना चाहिए इफ यू फॉल नाइनटी नाइन टाइम यू शुड गेट अप हमको अपने आप को निराशा में नहीं डूबो के रखना चाहिए हर पल नया पल है और हम नए चेतना से नए इंस्पिरेशन से काम कर सकते हैं फिर उदाहरण के तौर पे उन्होंने बताया कि हम आप निर्णय करते हैं कि हम सुबह इतने बजे उठेंगे और नहीं उठ पाते तो बार बार एक्सपेरिमेंट करके किस तरह से क्या आप कोई किसका समय भोजन का कम मात्रा कम की जाए या भोज सोने से पहले हम क्या कर रहे हैं उससे क्या तो इस तरह से एक्सपेरिमेंट करके हम कोशिश कर सकते हैं कि जो हम अपना दृष्टान करते हैं जो हम चाहते हैं अपने में बदलाव करना वो बदलाव कर सकें भोजन के बारे में उन्होंने बताया कि कई बार लोग वहां अमरावती में अब तो काफी अच्छा भोजन है पहले नहीं होता था तो किस तरह से भोजन अगले दिन अच्छा होगा कि नहीं इस भाई के कारण लोग सोचते थे कि अभी खा लेते हैं तो इस तरह की जो मन की स्थिति है वो उसको अगर हम देख लें और उसको अपने उसको लेके अपने आप को प्रताड़ित नहीं करें तो हम साधना के मार्ग पे आगे बढ़ते रहते हैं उसके लिए जैसे हमने उदाहरण दिया कि भोजन हम करते हैं जितना फिर भी तीन दो तीन तीन चार घंटे के बाद फिर भूख लगती है तो चाहे हम थोड़ा खाएं चाहे ज्यादा खाएं तो ये बात तो अगर हम समझ जाते हैं तो हम अपनी को एक ऑटो सजेशन दे सकते हैं अपने जैसे उन्होंने बताया कि लेकिन टॉक टू स्टॉमक एंड से कि भाई ये तो ऐसा हो ही रहा है तो क्यों जबरदस्ती ज्यादा खाया जाए तो इस तरह से ऑटो सजेशन से भी हम अपने आप को संयमित कर सकते हैं फिर उन्हें एक और महत्वपूर्ण बात बताई कि पहले पहले लोग सोचते हैं कि अब हम भगवान की बुद्धिज्म में आ गए हैं साधना कर रहे हैं तो सारी प्रॉब्लम शॉर्ट आउट हो जाएंगी उन्हें तो ऐसा होता नहीं है और वहां पर अमरावती के उदाहरण दिया कि वहां पर साइकोथेरेपी नॉन वायलेंट कम्युनिकेशन इस तरह की चीजें भी सिखाई जाती है क्योंकि जो लोग हैं जो उन्होंने बचपन में बहुत भारी ट्रामा महसूस किया है तो उनको साइकोथेरेपी की जरूरत पड़ती है और ये भाव की साधना से सब कुछ ठीक हो जाएगा वो शायद हम कई हम लोगों में कई बार आया था वो हमारे लिए शायद एक अच्छा उदाहरण आपने प्रस्तुत किया कि जो लोग बचपन में भी या बहुत बाद में भी ट्रॉमा है जैसे सेक्सुअल अब्यूज है रेप है या बहुत फैमिली की डिफिकल्टी है बचपन बहुत ब्रूटलाइज हुए हैं तो उन सब चीजों को जो कि हम एक्नोलेज भी नहीं कर पाते हैं उनका जो इम्पैक्ट है वो इतना ज्यादा होता है कि उसके लिए साइकोथेरेपी या दूसरे तरीके भी अडॉप्ट करने हों तो वो कोई की जरूरत पड़ती है तो और वो अमरावती में उस वैसा सिचुएशन फैसिलिटी क्रिएट की हुई है और उन्होंने दूसरी तरफ का भी ध्यान देते हुए कहा कि आजकल पुरुषों को भी काफी दिक्कत है कि पता नहीं पच्चीस साल पहले तुमने मुझे इस तरह देखा था और ऐसा एक्यूजेशन आ जाता है तो आजकल जो है ये संसार की जो परिस्थिति हो गई है वो काफी डिफिकल्ट हो गई है फिर उन्होंने याद दिलाया कि पांच शील जो है वो कितने महत्वपूर्ण है और उससे हम पांच तरह की फ्रीडम देते हैं लोगों को फ्रीडम फ्रॉम फियर फ्रीडम फ्रॉम स्ट्राइफ मतलब उनको भय से मुक्ति दे देते हैं लोगों को कि हम क्योंकि हम हिंसा नहीं करते तो भय से मुक्त हो जाते हैं हम झगड़ा नहीं करते तो वो डर से मुक्त हो जाते हैं हम वैर नहीं करते तो उनको वैर से मुक्ति मिलती है तो इस तरह से हम जब उन्होंने ये बताया कि हम शील का पालन करके लोगों को भी मुक्त कुछ इन तरह की फ्रीडम देते हैं और अपने को भी इस तरह की फ्रीडम देते हैं फिर उन्हें जो मंगल सूत्र उसका ध्यान दिलाया है इस ब्लेसिंग का कि जो इस मार्ग पर चलते हैं वो हमेशा सेफ रहते हैं जब वो कहते हैं जब उसमें सेफ्टी का मतलब है सुरक्षित रहते हैं इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि कोई फिजिकल लेवल की बात है वो सुरक्षित हार्ट में सुरक्षित रहते हैं हमारा चित्त सुरक्षित रहता है चाहे कितने भी डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन हो कितना भी खतरा हो 
हम एक यूनिवर्सल विजडम से जुड़े रहते हैं और अगर इतनी स्थिति भी आ जाए कि हम उस परिस्थिति में मर भी जाए तब भी हमारी सेफ्टी बनी रहती है क्योंकि हमारा चित्त जो है वो सजग है और उस सजग चित्त से मृत्यु जो है वो हमारे लिए ब्लेसिंग ही बनती है तो उन्होंने अंत में कहा कि सूत्र पढ़ना भी इस तरह के सूत्र पढ़ने से भी लाभ होता है और हम फिर उन्होंने कहा था कि आगे की बातें जो हैं कि वो कल करेंगे तो कुछ शुरू किया था तो मैं उसको रिपीट नहीं करूंगा उन्होंने कहा था कि वो कल उसकी बात करेंगे अनुमोदना हनुमान धम्म कथा है साधु कारंद नाम से साधु साधु सा हनुमोदा